We're twinsies, me in the chair, as if the chair is not an inanimate object. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Side Project Podcast. Oh, mm. oh it tastes so good. Oh, it tastes so good. How is everybody doing, man? <laughs> I hope everybody is doing absolutely awesome. You like that? Absolutely. How you feeling today? I'm feeling a little tired, but I'm also feeling absolutely awesome. And if you're feeling absolutely awesome as well, then you can get, you ready for it? Shameless plug. The absolutely awesome merch available on the side project merch store. Now there it is. I was wondering what he was leading up to. It's the absolutely awesome merch. You can get it in a, in a T. I don't know if post editing Chaz is already, uh, released. Uh, I know I did the absolutely awesome skit, the absolutely awesome, uh, llama skit and introduced the absolutely awesome merch and whatnot. But I don't know if I introduced the fact that, uh, we're gonna have we're gonna have crew necks. That's what this is behind me here. The the crew neck, absolutely awesome in a, in a crew neck. The new crew neck uh, sweaters are coming out. Uh, I know it's summer, but don't worry about that summer sale going on on everything that's uh, long sleeve. Absolutely awesome mugs and hats and all kinds of stuff is up there right now, alongside all the other stuff. The Project Park merch, the Run It Up merch, the Chazasaurus Rex mug, and and all the other shirts and hoodies and everything that you've got going on there. Anything that you want, it's there. Literally anything. Think about it. Go like this. Ah, uh, oh, and it, boom, it's there, and it's all absolutely awesome. Um, so wherever you are. You are you you want to rock your merch? You can ro- rock it right now. If you want if you want to, like it's it's a thousand and forty seven degrees in California where I'm at right now. It's hot as hell in September. And if you want to rock a crew neck, you can because it's on sale. It's on sale. I mean, get it now while it's on sale, right? Like I would, you know, because come winter, <laughs> prices are running it up. But uh, for everybody tuning in right now, whether you're watching on YouTube or you're watching on Spotify, as videos are available on Spotify as well, or maybe you're listening on your podcast service of choice. Who knows? You're very much so well aware either way that we are no strangers here to the world of geekdom and neither is my guest for this week a blogger posting the latest and greatest news sometimes rumors sometimes even just opinions and thoughts on many things dc focusing heavy on batman content but yet not quite limited to as marvel is thrown in there from time to time. Taking his love for DC, his love for Batman, and transitioning from not only just posting news and whatnot, but developing his own Batman series in the form of an audiobook that focuses on the relationship between Bruce Wayne and Jason Todd in the aftermath of the Red Hood. Joining me this week is the writer, the creator of Batman, the Stained Air, and some of you may know him as the runner of the Instagram page, the Legion of Geeks. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together and give a warm welcome to Jason Ortega. How's it thank going, you, man? Thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, my name is Jason yes. Ortega. <laughs> there we go, man. Yes. Had to give you, have you give you a nice big epic one being that, you know, you do a lot of stuff, Batman, you know, and Batman is epic. I felt like it had, it had to be over the top, man. How you feeling today, dude? I'm chilling. I'm chilling. It's a good day getting stuff done. I'm happy to be here, bro. Yes, man. I'm happy to have you here, man. This is awesome, dude. So Batman. The Stained Air, an audio book that is available right now, at least episode one. It focuses on Bruce and Jason's relationship after the events of Jason uh, being Red Hood. But it's much more than that as well. It's the struggles between Bruce and Jason, some internal struggles for Bruce himself, Jason's purpose, what is it, and the obstacles that is the new villain that comes into play. But before you even released and uh, and, and revealed The Stained Air, the general public would probably uh, know you from or as your successful Instagram page, The Legion of of geeks uh how did that all come together man the legion of geeks like what's the story behind your instagram account let's let the people know and let's let the people know the man behind the page how did it all start and who exactly is jason ortega man i i just kind of like always grew up loving uh batman and uh honestly it was it was really just batman for a while and then i found out you know growing up you know he's part of this universe the dc universe i started mm-hmm. getting into that big time and um, back in high school, you know, my, my, my friend group, the people I hung around were like not interested in geek stuff. So it was kind of like, um, all I really had to talk about them was like sports or whatever Tom Fuller we were getting up to. Yeah. So, um, yeah, man, I was just like, I need somewhere to talk to people about, uh, the stuff I like. And then, um, I thought, why not make like a Instagram page revolving around, um, whatever I want to talk about. And I just started posting DC stuff and people started wanting to talk about it with me. And, um, it was awesome. I, I had a place, uh, to, 
be excited for all the upcoming DC stuff. Right. And it's, it's been great. Right. How long, how long have you had the like page running? I, I think it started in 2016 before the, um, release of suicide squad. It, that was when it was released getting off the ground. And then, um, it was a lot of excitement. Then suicide squad came out and it was, it was not well received. <laughs> and then, yeah. um, that's kind of when the page started skewing towards the, Oh my God, we're in crisis mode kind of thing. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome, dude. So like about like six, six, seven years or so, six years of, of doing this. That's awesome, dude. I mean, when did you start seeing it like really like take off and become a thing where you were like, oh shit, like I've got something here. First, it was like a very slow escalation. Um, mm-hmm. I remember making posts like 500 followers and like yeah. being really excited. And yeah. then um, one day there was this other Instagram page. I I don't know if he has an Instagram anymore. I don't see him anymore, but he was pretty big at the time. His name was Akil Hawaj. And um, he invited me on a live stream. And, you know, sometimes that stuff works, sometimes it doesn't, but it really did back then. He invited me yeah. to a live stream and he was just like, hey, I love this guy's stuff. He had like 20K. So kind of like what I have now back right. then. Right. Um, and then overnight, I just got like 2,000 followers after that live stream. And then from then, it was just steady, you know? Damn, um, nice. Yeah. Nice. And when, when, when was that? What year was that? Do you recall? It was, I think it was when Justice League was about to come out. So it had to be like 2017. Right. Still, still, still a time when Instagram was different. Not exactly what it is today. Not all like yeah. reels focus. Reelstagram is what everybody's calling it now, you know? Not real, not, not super reels focus and everything. It was more, uh, people were, I think the timelines back then, people were actually seeing people's stuff, you know, because that's another thing that people often talk about is my followers aren't seeing my content. You know, it's not in chronological order anymore. So it was also a, a different time, a different place. And it probably, probably benefited from the algorithm and the way that it was back then as well. I hear a lot of people saying it's much harder to pick up that traction these days, you know, and I experienced my ups and downs as well. So kudos to you, man. That's awesome though, dude, with, with the success that you've had with your following on Instagram, with that following comes what we've all experienced, man, which, which will be, you know, at some point in time, which will be trolls, negativity, hateful comments. And I say it not to bring to light, like anything derogatory, but rather because you actually do have a highlight on your page discussing how you want people to be respectful. You want people to have respectful conversations, you know, and debates are going to occur. That's inevitable, of course, but there's no need to tear one another apart. And that's something that I, I do here as well I'm on my podcast, you know, uh, it's a, it's a place to escape. It's a place to have a good time. It's a place to have some few, a few laughs when it, when it happens, you know, do I get passionate about things? Of course. Do serious conversations sometimes occur? Of course, but it's a place to escape and a place where like-minded people can have these conversations and not feel like they're just going to get shit on left and right for whatever their opinion may be. But it's almost inevitable that the larger that you get, the more crowd that you draw, the more different types of people with different types of approaches will find themselves within your comments. And because of the content that you post, besides Batman, the stained air, uh, the majority is based off of, you know, uh, uh, like in a sense, other people's content, as far as like DC news, Marvel news, or whatever the case may be. Um, but there's times where you do throw in like your opinions and on a topic. And that's kind of the focus point of the post. If you are approached with those type of people that maybe don't know how to properly form or express themselves or express an opinion and just rather almost tear someone down how do you deal with a situation of such and do you find yourself dealing with those situations often or no i deal with it i think every time i make a post or pretty much every day because i try to stay consistent on it there's always going to be at least one um yeah. person that i come into that way and um i don't know i've, I've it's kind of hard because i feel like you know this is why most like people I'm not famous by any means, but if I ever were to be, I would definitely be like most famous people who get like a, um, somebody to manage their stuff for them Yes, because (laughs) it is some days, you know, you can take it. And I I think one of the days, like most days when it goes well, I just leave someone like, if they say something, I'll reply to them in a snarky way. Right. And it'll just be like good fun and they might get mad or whatever, but that's the end of it. But a lot of the time, like I just, you know, I'm a human being, I got things going on in my life and it's like, I just feel like, you know, they give me that negative vibe. And sometimes like, I just feel like I have to retort back, you know, yeah, um, yeah. Which, which isn't always the the best thing. And that's why I think like a lot of, again, famous people have somebody to Handle say it. things for them. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's an inevitability. I, I feel it's a little unfair because, you know, again, when I was making the page back then, 
I genuinely did come with um, good intent. I just wanted to talk about things. And I think Instagram was a very different place back then where, you know, a lot of the people that were in this geek stuff were there to talk about it as well. Now, sadly, um, I've gained this, this following and, you know, I, I mean, it is a blessing. Like there are a lot of things that I've benefited from for it, but also um, it's just like, dang, I just came here to like, um, talk about comic books and now I've yeah. got this guy from Nebraska <laughs> messaging me like every single night sending me like <laughs> headless people or something you know yeah, yeah. so it's like um I would tell anybody if they're planning to like have a platform of any sort um you uh you're gonna have to deal with sadly and um yeah I just wish I just wish more people would know that before they get into yeah. it can you recall a time where like a debate got heated on your page or like what's a topic that you found that like really gets people revved up if there is any? The the most revved up I would say on my page was um, back when, I mean, there's still a, a lot of it, but I've kind of let it go because it's kind of like, who cares anymore? But there was a yeah. huge part of my page's like career, I guess, where I was campaigning hard against mm -hmm. um Batflick, like the version of Batman that kills a man on Instagram. So every single day, I swear, I would have to say something about it. Mm -hmm. Um, and and people, you know, they're really passionate about the Snyder yeah. stuff. So it went down every single day. And I swear, <laughs> like it was like, and the, the the other thing that people don't understand is I will sit here and I will take the blame. I've I've said it on my mm -hmm. page multiple times, and I'll say it as many times as they want to. I was not when I began my page, a lot of people still remember me for being that person. Yeah. Um, I, I was very combative, like a lot of the people right. that are now. And it's because I started when I was a kid, you know, right. like I started the page when I was a kid and that doesn't necessarily excuse everything, but it's like, I had a, a different sense of maturity. I'm, I'm yes. a human being that grew over time. Yeah. Um, so now when I get into an argument or whatever, I'm like, okay, well, let me, try and look at this logically. Let me see what parts of this person's argument do I agree with? What do I dis disagree with? Let's find a common exactly. ground here. Whereas before it was kind of like, I remember I made this post that I feel super bad about to this day. Um, I basically just didn't like some other pages and I kind of brought attention mm -hmm. to it. And oh, it was just shit, like, yeah. I, f I feel like that's where I got, where I got my karma from, you know? Yeah. Cause it's like, yeah. it's like, uh, but again, I was, I was a kid. I, I, I didn't realize it was like, you know, this was something that, um, impacted people and like my voice mattered. I, I yeah. only had like a thousand followers and I guess I thought I was like a hot shot or whatever. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. so yeah, I mean like, uh, yeah, I, 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 I've been guilty of it. I think all of us human beings yeah, are just guilty are. of, yeah, being super passionate and yeah. confusing that passion for what's inappropriate sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. It's just, uh, I guess I kind of, <laughs> I lost my point here, but what I'm trying to say is like, yeah, man, like, uh, yeah. it happens all the time. Yeah. Um, I've been guilty of it myself. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I, I, I had a lot of it with the Snyder stuff. Yeah. Um, which is ironic. Cause like if I, I, this will probably never happen, but if, if by any chance that ever does happen, I want Ben Affleck to know Ben Affleck. Like, I think you're an awesome human being. I think you're an awesome <laughs> actor. I just did not like the way that Batman was written. It has nothing yeah. to do with him. It has nothing yeah, yeah. to do with anybody involved in the movie. It's just a, a creative choice, not a character. So. Right, right. I, I feel you on that because I'm actually, I'm, I'm a giant Batflick fan. I enjoyed his Batman, but there's a lot of things that I didn't enjoy when it comes to um, portraying him. Like, I, I liked Ben and I liked the way that mm -hmm. he did what he could do with what he was given. But I didn't like a lot of things where how it was written. There was certain dialogue and stuff that I didn't like. So I'm like, uh, while I do like Batflick, there's also a lot of things that I don't like. So I would be one of those people, just like what you said, is where if somebody disagreed with me, I would probably look at, well, what do I agree with in their disagreement? Because I'm sure there are things. And it's just like, it's just that living and learning too. And it's, and it's all just growing and maturity and experience, you know, with having an audience as well. You know, when you're first doing things, you're kind of just doing it for yourself. And then if it grows, you now you're doing it for more people and that changes your perception of things. So it's just, it's a lot of different things. But speaking of more so current heated topics with everything occurring with Warner Bros. Discovery right now, man, I want to, I kind of want to know your thoughts. I mean, one just like your opinions just because you're you're a person but also because of the legion of geeks you know you you probably get a lot of a lot of comments you see a lot of comments you see a lot of the communities uh, uh you know weighing the balance of different different opinions and how people feel so for quite a long time now 
Many fans have been wanting a, a changeup in the hierarchy at WB, and that's what we're supposedly going to be getting. Well, we are getting that and going to be continue getting. Uh, many fans have wanted a dedicated studio for DC properties, and that's exactly what's going to occur. For a very long time now, there's been an outpouring for a Kevin Feige-like figure to head those DC properties, and that's what will be implemented at some point in time when the right fit is found. There's a lot of DC fans that have wanted um, the, the executives at, at WB to understand the importance of properly portraying the DC Trinity, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, and the Warner Bros. Uh, Discovery CEO David Zaslav has expressed that he does agree with that statement and he understands those points as well. So there's a, a long list of many fans' outcries that are being highlighted and, and stated to be understood under this new regime, which, which is a good thing for an executive to at least say, hey, I hear you and I'm going to try, but it being properly executed is another thing, which we're just going to have to wait and see if, you know, that that occurs in a, in a way that pleases the majority of fans and how it unfolds. But whether you're you're for everything that's occurring at WBD, against it, whether you're somewhere in the middle, I mean, where, where do you lie on the matter, matter? What do you like? What do you dislike? I mean, what are your thoughts? So I actually heard your... Um episode about the whole Warner Brothers Discovery thing. And I was I got, just I got like, a, I, may I cut you off one second? I got a little over passionate during that episode though. I will admit that I got a lot of shit for that episode. That's like the first episode that I got a lot of shit for, but I think it's also because of the way that I came off when I was like watching it back in editing. I was like, Oh man, like I didn't realize how over the top and passionate I was getting about this topic. So I just want to state that, but go ahead. Keep, keep going. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, I mean, I mean, I guess that's, I guess that's why so many people come from my head because I was listening to it and I was like, man, this man is, he's saying what I'm thinking right now. Like, I was totally <laughs> agreeing with you. I mean, like, because I, I, I feel the same way. I'm like, we've been asking for these things for years and now we get them. And when we get them, people are still mad. And it's like, that's, that's what drives me up a wall because I'm just I didn't, like, I don't we, understand that either. I'm confused. We can't win. We can't yeah, win. I yeah. mean, and, 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 and I say we, because that's how much of a fan I am, but really right. it's not even me. It's them. They yeah. can't win, you know? Yeah. Right. And yeah. it's like, um, I'm just like, and from my point of view, from what I've heard, um, this might change once we start to see some of these like, um, strategies that they're wanting to implement but from what I've heard. I am a fan of David Zaslav and the things he's saying at the moment. I mean, I'm just like, right. okay, I, I totally agree with this. I think there needs to be an emphasis on this. Right. Um, I totally think that some of these things need to be cut down. We need to put more focus over here. Uh, studio is a great idea. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm totally on board with it. I get that some people, I think, I think there's two groups of people that aren't on board with it. I think some of them are genuinely like they, they are apprehensive just because of like the history of DC and like, right. um, certain things like they're fans of animation. And so right. I get that. But, um, I also think that there are some other people, um, which again, is just like, sadly DC is in this, um, kind of war with Marvel. That's just how comp like, yeah, that's just being in an industry. There's yeah. always going to be a competitiveness sense. And I think that there's right. a lot of people from that side that it kind of like in sports teams who, masquerade over here on this side and they're yeah. ready for like anything to just be like this is garbage i yeah. hate this <laughs> yes. blah 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 and yeah. and so that kind of like is always going to get mixed in and my worry with it is um i just don't want them to be making the decisions that i would say the majority of us like tend to want or have been asking for and then once they start making them a certain group of people gets vocal online and is like no we don't want this and then them to backtrack that's right. what i don't want right. to do because it's like yeah. I don't know how the, the, like the way they view social media goes on over there. Like, I don't know who's mm -hmm. checking everything, but I really like, again, I don't know, but I hope that, um, on a lot of these debates that they're seeing both sides of the arguments, not just one side. Right. Um, so yeah, anyways, I, I, I am very like positive and supportive of it lately. Um, but I know that there are a lot of people that aren't, but we'll just wait and see, I guess. Yeah. What, what do you see most like uh, happening on the Legion of Geeks, like in the comments and stuff? Do you, you see most people supportive of it or, or do you see most people not or just somewhere both 50 50? I think I see on my page there are a lot of people who are supportive whenever I post something Zaslav related. Mm -hmm. But I think I think part of it is just kind of a joke because I've, I've been on like I've, I've kind of made this joke, like this running joke of like Zaslav being like 
God for these here or something. <laughs> and so like a lot of people will come and they'll be like, yeah. Zaslav, Lord and Savior or whatever, or something like that. <laughs> Turn into um, like a, a running joke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But but I, there are a lot of people, even though my page is like positive about it, that will come and like be like, mm-hmm. no, this is like that or whatever. Yeah. Um, and I see that a lot in a lot of places. I would say it's pretty 50 50, honestly, mm-hmm. from like what I see on my page and other pages. But yeah. um, I think I think regardless of it being 50 50 about him, I think a lot of people, the majority are probably on board with the idea of um, putting a focus on Batman, Superman and Wonder Woman. So there's that. Right. At least. Right. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm skeptical about a few things, but I'm more so on board such as I, you know, I won't stay every, everybody's time because they, I did a whole episode about it, but, but I, I, I am, I am more so on board. I feel like the things that he's saying, just to reiterate myself and, and also uh, agree with you is the things that he's saying sound good. And they sound like they, they're listening to everything that we've been saying for the past couple years. So that's where my confusion comes from. I know I got super over passive aggressive and passionate about it in that previous episode, but that's where my confusion comes from. Uh, when it's like, they're saying everything that they're saying, Hey, we hear everything you've been saying the last few years. And now everyone's like, nah, we don't want that anymore. It's like, wait, wait a minute. What? <laughs> like, I, I'm so confused by it. And I'm very confused by the Batgirl thing too, because a lot of what I personally saw uh, when it came to Batgirl was there was a lot of people that I don't know if it wasn't, ne- if it was necessarily not for it, but maybe just a little bit more so like, uh, eh, like whatever about it. Didn't really wanted it, want it, wanted maybe more, more Superman, Batman stories fleshed out first before we just delved, you know, dove into that. And then, uh, and then it being canceled, I'm seeing a lot of people pissed off at the cancellation and I'm very confused by that too. You know, I mean, I understand, um, the people saying like, well, they worked hard on it. They put money into it. Like the actress, the, the cast, you know, everybody behind the scenes. And I totally get that. That that's, that's valid. That's a valid point for sure. Everybody works really hard and they want to see the product come out. No doubt about it. I get that. But the other side of things where everybody was like shitting on Batgirl, a lot of what I saw for a long time. And then now they're, they're just like ignoring the fact that they shit on it this entire time. That could confuses the shit out of me. You know what I mean? So I guess that's where, I guess that's where sometimes you got to take matters into your own hands, just like you have with Batman, the stained air, dude, the bread and butter of this episode, man, August 15th, just a month ago, you released episode one of your anticipated audio drama, Batman, the stained air, uh, a story of a veteran Batman played by Mason Sandoval, who has found himself at a crossroads in his crime fighting career that causes him to ponder if his war on crime even matters. The drama also explores his tainted relationship with Jason Todd, voiced by Aiden Proko, following the events of Jason's time as Red Hood. The Executioner is out. The Executioner is out here in Gotham, portrayed by Henry Lane, which sees him taking justice into his own hands, much like Batman, but with an Executioner twist, which is not bad approved, which then sees him having to battle justice from a different perspective. This is Vicki Vale here at Gotham Cathedral in the Narrows, where there appears to have been yet another murder by the Executioner. We have some eyewitnesses here on the scene. Vicki Vale, Gotham City News. Care to comment on what you saw? It was fucking crazy, man. Dude was huge. He must have been the size of Bane. So you think Bane and this Executioner are one and the same? Could be. I mean, if I tell you who it was, can I get some cash thrown my way or something? Thank you for your time, sir. Whoever this executioner is, he is clearly dangerous. Bane, of course, is infamously the man who broke the Batman nearly a decade ago. To have another killer like him running around is not just a problem for the citizens of Gotham, but also for the caped crusader himself. We'll try and get a closer look here in a minute. Back to you, Jeff. I know at one point in time, man, uh, you wanted this to be a short film and you transitioned it into an audio drama instead. How long have you had like the stained air idea? I mean, before it finally came to light and like, where did it all stem from? How did, how did it start? I think there was in reality, what happened is, um, my dream Batman story would not be this one per se. I always had a different idea, but there is something in the story. It's it's just so hard without the spoilers. I think I think <laughs> in the future, once it's all out, like there will be a lot to talk about. But right. it's it's like there is this one aspect in the story. Um, I played Arkham Knight, um, mm. the game like forever yeah. ago, and I remember being like, a lot of people were kind of apprehensive about the idea 
um, about the Arkham Knight being Jason Todd. Yeah. And so I've always thought in my, in my, to myself, I love so many Batman stories. And I think Arkham Knight is still like an incredible Batman story, but mm-hmm. I know a lot of people have an issue with, um, the reveals of like a villain in Batman stories. It's always like, Oh my God, it's the same guy. Or like, uh, like we've seen this before or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I've always thought, how could you have a villain in a Batman story be revealed? Um, and it being something that doesn't ruin a specific character. Um, and at the same time is surprising. Um, so that's kind of the basis of this. Um, and also I've always like loved the idea of like stories with Batman, yeah. um, and, and being more in a father figure kind of role versus, um, the younger, like early years, because that's what we, it seems like that's what we get all the time. Um, in the movies, which mm-hmm. don't get me wrong, like all the movies are fucking incredible, but right. um, that's that's what we tend to always get. So I just I, I just I like the idea of people putting out more ideas of like how a veteran Batman could work. Um, so yeah, really, it was, I agree um, with you on that. By the way, I just want to second that. I agree with yeah, you on that. Yeah, I, I yeah, like yeah, a veteran yeah. Batman for sure. A veteran Batman story is is super interesting to me. Well, that's that's probably why we both like some aspect of Batflick. Right. <laughs> but, that, that, um, is, that is one thing that I actually really liked. I like the veteran aspect of him. I, I didn't like the fact, just to butt in on that real quick, here, here's one for people that always tell me I'm a, I'm a Batflick fanboy. Uh, I believe, if mistake me if, I, if, I'm, if I'm remembering this incorrectly, but uh, didn't, didn't Zack Snyder confirm that the, the, the Robin that Joker killed in his, in his Snyderverse was actually Dick Grayson instead of Jason yep, Todd? Yep. I didn't mm-hmm. like that. I didn't like that Man. aspect. I didn't like that at all. I didn't, I didn't understand it either. I don't understand why he chose to do that. So anyway, just wanted to say that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. No, I I totally agree. That's, that's one of the things that just real quick on that. I, I I see a lot of people like backtrack on their like of Snyder after that, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I, uh, yeah. So it was just kind of like, I always sat there and I always thought about Ark Knight and I was like, how could that reveal have been done better? Um, or like, how do I personally think it could have been done better? Um, because again, uh, everything is objective, um, subjective. And yeah. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people that will see this and be like, this guy really thinks that like, this is good. This is straight up garbage. <laughs> and, I, and I welcome that. I welcome that, you know? Um, but yeah, I, I, I still want to at least be able to like put my idea out there. If people agree with it, then they yeah. do. If they disagree with it, then they don't. But I'd at least like to know what other people would think about it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it was just kind of just that played Arkham Knight and, for years, I was like, man, like, how could it have been done differently? So. <laughs> Keep your guns trained on it. If he even looks like he's planning to leave that room, open fire. You wanted it to be a short film originally, right? But uh, I was I was reading you you it was bit, due to funding issues you couldn't you couldn't make that happen right so you guys set up an Indiegogo and transitioned it into a an audio drama instead is that how the process went Yeah so um, no I I've always wanted to make a short film in the like DC with like DC characters I originally mm-hmm. tried to do um, one called Joker and Harley reimagined so it was like a completely different story completely different characters but um, nice. yeah I've always wanted to like do something DC related. Um, but I've had like an idea of some of the things in the story in my head, but, uh, no, this was always like this specific story was always going to be like an audio drama. Oh, okay. Okay. For sure. Mm-hmm. Something that I like that you said is that this story is about family and how complicated that can be complicated, but not impossible broken, but not destroyed. Where are you taking your inspiration from most man? And, and that's all like comics, animation and or live action film, any of that, but also like, is there any real world inspiration when it comes to, to painting this picture, you know, your picture, the way that you see this, this going about where, where are you taking your inspiration from most? I, um, you know, I don't want to put anyone on blast is the thing, but, um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's a family story. There is real world inspiration there. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, I have a family, <laughs> yeah. so um, there's, there's, yeah. there's stuff like that in there. Um, I, I, I strongly believe in the idea of mining, uh, your life, um, for content. Right. Um, but, uh, so there's that also there's, there's tons of like DC stuff that's in my head. Um, under the red hood obviously was part yeah. of this. Um, mm-hmm. same with the family, um, right. uh, the Arkham games, mm-hmm. family naming series, um, 
there's a little bit of Batman and Robin by Grant Morrison in there. There's a little bit of nice. Scott Snyder. Um, and, uh, also, uh, like Batman brave and the bold. There's a little bit of that in there too. I'm, I'm trying, there's a specific part of Batman, the brave and the bold that I want to be done mm-hmm. for future episodes. It might be able to be a thing. It might not. Um, we'll see, but there is one thing that will 100% be in this, um, near the end that is very brave and the bold inspired. Uh, so like, yeah, I, I definitely can't wait to put that in there. Um, it's something that I've always felt like every Batman, uh, movie should have, it hasn't been done yet, but I hope that like maybe one day somebody like up there in the higher ups will be like, mm-hmm. this would be a cool idea. So, um, yeah, we'll nice. see, but yeah, there's all kinds of stuff. Nice. Yeah. You're taking inspiration from some of the classics, man. Some of the classics, some of the greats, and you're pulling it off greatly too. For anybody that hasn't, that hasn't heard this by the way, and you're just watching this and you're hearing it for the first time, please definitely go check it out. All the links are in the description, wherever it is that you're, you're tuning in right now. Why the future of the audio series seems to be focused on, uh, maybe so the pre the present of the bat family, as well as, you know, what the executioner continues to be up to Jason's purpose, the external and internal struggles of all of that. Um, episode one does somewhat open up with the classic beating, uh, that joke gives Jason in which voice actor Luke Baxter is doing an amazing phenomenal performance of the Joker dude I mean amazing job Luke if you happen to be tuning into this right now kudos dude you are a perfect Joker for sure about three minutes in you hear a narrator and forgive me if I'm pronouncing this wrong uh, I believe it's Subi uh, uh, Baig Baig I'm not I'm not certain I am so sorry uh, if, if, you, if you happen to be watching this as well please correct me but about three minutes in you hear the narrator she voices and I quote a child endured hell once warm blazing fire miles away from Gotham City tied to a chair with barbed wire stabbings burnings as you hear crackling of fire, and then she continues, beatings, and much more. As then a chainsaw revs in the background right before Joker's dialogue begins. I mean, it is, it is golden, dude. I imagine that when you gave up Batman's name, you thought this would all be over. You gave in for nothing, chump. Now, we own you, kiddo. You could have chose to start this story simply with just implying the Joker and Jason background, you know, as, as the synopsis even states, you don't even, the synopsis doesn't even state that that's going to be a, a a segment in in there or anything. It, It states that it's going to be after his time as Red Hood and everything, but you tell this gruesome tale, a fan favorite, I would say, and, and everyone involved in yourself and the voice actor and every voice actress and, and actors and everything. I mean, they did a phenomenal job. Everybody pulled it and did a great justice, man. It was perfect. Why did you feel it was important to include that scene? Whereas you, you could have just implied it. Why did you, why did you want that scene in there for sure? I strongly believe in the idea of show don't tell, um, when it comes to writing. And, um, I think it's kind of one of those things of like, a lot of people would be like, okay, well, we've heard Jason Todd's origin like a billion times. We get the mm-hmm. point. Um, but it's like, you know, you have to, when you write something, even if it's from like a specific, like if, if it's adapted or inspired by a material, you have to write it as if, um, whoever is tuning in hasn't read it because right. just because it's a, a Batman thing, um, doesn't mean that whoever's listening to it is a huge Batman fan and knows everything about Batman. So Correct. you have to, the story shouldn't be reliant on you knowing material from something else it should be reliant on what you present and so that that was kind of why i did it it was like okay um jason todd died in this universe um and i want them to know how that went down in this version and also if anybody doesn't know that jason todd died um i want them to know that well he he didn't die but if they if they don't know that he was interrogated and tortured etc um i want them to know that that happened um, that's also why in the, um, in the episode, they also mentioned the red hood thing, um, yeah. that could have been glossed over as well and just been like, okay, well, you know, he was red hood at some point, but I wanted people to know if they haven't like read Batman, like, yes, this guy, um, after what happened, he had a point in his life where he took on this other mantle. Um, and that's kind of another thing that's led to where we are now. So, yeah, I just think it's important to, um, uh, show the audience the specific things that matter instead of just using it as a throwaway line. 
Right. Yeah. No, I agree with you wholeheartedly, man. That That's awesome. I, and you guys, like I said, you guys did it justice. I mean, it's pulled together perfectly to the point where it's like, I feel like even if you're not a Batman fan, obviously I, I know that story, but I, even if you're not a Batman, I feel like the way that you pulled it off, the way that it's written, the way that the actors and, 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 and the narrator as well narrated everything and went about it, I feel like it, it's perfectly done to where you could close your eyes and sit down and listen to it and visualize everything that's actually happening to Jason in that moment. You guys did it perfectly as is the entire the entirety of the episode there's a moment during the joke joker and jason scene where it's narrated that jason is quote now missing two fingers an ear an eyeball i love the way she says that by the way and much <laughs> more she's like eyeball i love that the camera is aimed at jason now missing two fingers an ear an eyeball and much more. I love the darker details in in the wording, dude. The descriptive dialogues that are that are used, you know, not holding back that such a moment is definitely gruesome. It's real, it's serious, it's happening right there, right then. It's Joker. He's brutal, he's insane. You know, I love it. Not holding back. Is this a glimpse of what we can uh, continue to expect throughout the series? Like, is this an idea of any of the descriptiveness, you know, within dialogue that we can expect to maybe see when it comes with, you know, uh, the crimes of, say, the executioner? Like, I love love me some of that dark reality of the Batman. Can we hope to see more of this throughout the series as it continues? Yeah. So real quick, I want to say, um, yeah, I, uh, Luke, um, I feel so blessed to, uh, have had him or, well, still will have him as the Joker in this. Mm -hmm. Um, they, all of the cast fucking incredible. Um, Subi, originally the idea I had for the narrator was very different, but then she was just like, well, can I just like try it? And then she did it in that voice. And I was like, oh, I fucking love this. Yeah. I um, love it too. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, she, she actually also does a, another character later on. She does Renee Montoya. Oh, um, nice, which nice. I, I'm, I'm telling you, man, her Renee Montoya is golden. Nice, dude. It yeah, is you got great. It everybody's is great. doing an amazing job. Yeah. Um. But, but, uh, yeah, Luca uh, as the Joker is incredible. Also, Aiden is mm -hmm. um Jason Mason's Batman. Everyone yeah. is, is is amazing. Um. But uh. Yeah, Luke actually, um, he, he's he's no stranger to uh, doing this voice acting stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So again, I was like, there were so many times um, with everyone, but like, yeah, him. I, I I even like felt like telling sometimes, like, man, like I should because uh, this is a passion project. Everybody right. working on this is doing this out of out of passion. It means the world to me. But right. there were so many times where I was like, dude, like I should be paying you, bro. I should really be paying. You. Like this is incredible. <laughs> um, but yeah, so. Yeah, it was great. And um, yeah, so that scene, uh, yeah, it was it was very gruesome. I wanted to separate my version of the Joker in that moment from others. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, there there is there is more um, going forth. I'm I, I'm also a big believer though in like um, not doing gore for gore's sake. So True. it's not like there's not gore littered in every single episode. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, there is there is some later down the road, and is it is pretty like a grizzly. So yeah, there's definitely some more of that. Good man, good, good. It's it's done beautifully. Like I keep saying, dude. Speaking of the future uh, of of the series, man, episode one is out right now. Uh, you plan to have six episodes for this series? Is that correct? Is that still what's what yeah, the plan yeah, yeah. is? Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay, so they're all, six they're episodes. All, yeah, they're all written. Um, we're just it's just the process of editing them at the moment. Right, right. Are they all recorded as well, or no? the main characters are, are recorded. There are some characters that are like in it for like five minutes, maybe, or like, mm -hmm. just have like a little, like one off line. Um, so those aren't necessarily done at the moment, but all the main characters are done. Nice. Nice, man. Is this going to be uh, just simply the future of it? Is this just going to be simply focused on Batman characters or can we expect to see like any other DC characters throughout, you know, DC's universe show up or is it just solely bat centric? <sighs> I would say it has a huge bat focus, but every single character that you can imagine in the DC universe exists in this world. So Nice, dude. Nice, man. I know you're treading lightly there. I can tell. <laughs> uh, there's a great reference, man, that Jason uh, makes to Bruce in the series where he states that Damien, who is currently Robin, is out with Nightwing and the Teen Titans. I love that reference to other characters. It definitely makes the world feel, uh, you know, more full, more active, more more real, even if they uh, they don't necessarily appear. Just the reference makes it feel like it really, this is this is Gotham and, and more, you know? But you know I gotta ask, man, 
You know, I gotta, I gotta try to pull out some of those exclusive dudes. So I know you gotta maybe tread lightly, but is there, is it just simply a reference or can we expect to possibly see any of the other bat, bat family members in the stained air six episode run? I think they are all so close to each other that it is very hard for them not to communicate every night. And <laughs> nice. What a nice, nice and well-educated answer there, dude. <laughs> I like that, man. Uh, what's your, what's your overarching goal with this dude? Like with the stained air, like, I mean, what do you hope to achieve? Do you want, do you want to continue this past six episodes? Is it like a, is it a one and done story? Do you have any spinoffs planned? Like, is there hope of still turning it into a, a short film or, I mean, what, 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 what's it all looking like? You know, every single night I go to sleep, I lay there and don't sleep for a good two to three hours because I'm thinking what happens with this character after this story? Um, so I'm always thinking about it, but no, I think, um, it's just a one-off. I do have ideas of where it would go if I did decide to do something else, but no, I, I just, I just wanted to make something, um, to show how I envisioned Batman and also, um, to have something to put on my resume because I'm just trying to build a resume as a creative, um, always. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I have like small things, but nothing really that like anyone can find around the world. So that's really what I hope to accomplish with this is just have something I can, um, put on paper aside from like some school theater and stuff like that. Nice, man. Definitely dude. So when can we expect episode two? Episode two, as of right now, my editor is halfway through the rough cut of mm -hmm. episode two. Um, I would say maybe this month, most likely this month, um, nice. near the end of it. Yeah. Nice, dude. Everyone, please go check out Batman, The Stained Air. It is available on Spotify right now, episode one, as well as Apple. It's beautifully done, and I mean that. It is just an absolutely gorgeous listen. Kudos to you, man. You pulled it off flawlessly, and everybody involved. You can find the link in the description here on Side Project Podcast, wherever you are tuning in right now. But for those that have already tuned in to episode one, we've got an exclusive snippet that we're gonna play right here, right now, of episode two, and don't go anywhere because after the snippet, we're going to get into the cosplay of the week and a brief chat with Jason before we head out. But for now, enjoy this sneak peek of Batman, The Stained Air, Episode 2. You know what I want. Get to it. <laughs> I have absolutely no idea what you mean. Isn't that so? Oh, God. Oh, my God. <sighs> I tend to get more creative the longer these go on. You asshole. Don't you know what he'll do to me? I doubt he even knows your name. Busy guy like him. Talk! All right, all right! Uh, he's on his way to Gordon's. Without you and the Stooges? Said he wanted us to watch his stash. Also said he wanted one-on-one -on -one time between him and the old man. Then why the shooting at the library? You know what we're going to do right now? We're going to break up the monotony and let's get into this week's Cosplay of the Week! Oh. I like the way it sounds. This week's Cosplay of the Week is none other than Danny Darko! Ooh. And that's D-A-N-I-D-A-R-K-0 at the end for the O. And I'm throwing it up on the screen right about now. Ooh, look at this, man. And some of you, some of you may be asking, did you feature Danny Darko as a cosplay of the week because you just worked with him a few weeks ago? Well, when, let's see, when this episode comes out, it'll be about a week ago. I think it will. I think it will be about a week ago. No, actually, I've had Danny Darko planned as a cosplay of the week because this episode was pre-scheduled for weeks and I've had Danny Darko planned to be implemented into this episode before I even worked with Danny. So it's no, it's no little, uh, you know, special treatment there. Danny Darko, this is absolutely amazing. Dude, Danny, this is phenomenal, man. This is, this is his, his Tim Drake Robin, his Timmy Tuesdays as he puts it on, on Instagram all the time. This is absolutely dope, dude. I mean, the eye mask is just fitting perfectly. You got the hair down exactly how it should be. I love the way that this is like, 
like an armored, like the armored version. You know what I mean? I always love that. It's like, it's a little bit battle worn. It's like, looks like you've been through some shit. You know what I mean? You're really, you've got the, the, the collapsible, the bow staff and everything, the belt looking real big and Robin, the R on the chest. I mean, the gauntlets, they're big, they're huge, the gloves and everything. I love it, dude. Cape flowing in the background. And this photo is done by a friend of mine, someone who I've worked with in the past before as well. Art.herophoto on Instagram. Amazing photography. Do we even need to talk about? He's been featured on the show a million times for his photography work as well. Leo, we've got that's art that hero photos real name leo we have got to get you on the show we have worked together the time has come you need to make it out here because we are in the same state so we could have you on in person leo he already knows all this i'm acting like i'm acting like he doesn't know all this for entertainment he knows all this already danny this is absolutely dope man uh, I want to throw up a, a second photo here, and I'm throwing it up right about me, better rings now, and it's up on the screen now, and this one is featuring a previous cosplay of the week, a previous guest on the show, and that's Saddle Up, but uh, it's actually Saddle Up. For anybody, I always said Saddle Up. It became a running joke, and I know people were calling him Saddle Up this entire time, and that's that's on me. It's Saddle Up. It's a play on words. His name is Sod. Come on. We all know that, right? But we were pronouncing it wrong this entire time. People are probably like, I wasn't pronouncing it wrong. You were. You're right. I was. Um, this is amazing. Dude, another photo done by Art Hero Photo. I love this dude. Actually, this is a rendition that's from um, even even Danny says it in the caption. It says we gave that one image a shot. Um, it's from oh, it's on the tip of my tongue, dude. It is a comic cover, I believe. It's a Robin comic cover where he's doing the thing where he's covering his mouth a little bit and Batman's in the background. Um, I believe it's like one of the Robin comics. I can't remember one. It might be Robin it's, number um, one or something. You you recall? I, 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 yeah, I believe it's yeah Robin two and then it's the first issue and it's by um i think it's the it's a chuck dixon uh comic yes yes, i think it is i believe it is yes you're right and it's like the same exact framing and everything it is beautifully done dude saddle up danny darko is tim jake tim drake robin i love this man i love everything about it and you know i gotta throw up a third one dude i gotta throw up a third one and i'm throwing it up on the screen Ah, now and it's up there now and it's his red robin dude which actually danny was featured alongside he wasn't the cosplay of the week for this one but he was featured in the photo for cos previous cosplay of the week john vash um where it was like uh oh man who was it again it was it, it was batman it was um it, it was it was tim drake red the red robin and i believe it was i think it was another robin i can't remember off the top of my head right now i'm so sorry i apologize uh, 126 cosplay of the weeks you know what i mean um and like he says again timmy tuesday so if you're watching this on a tuesday hey hey we're all winning. Absolutely awesome, right? Timmy Tuesdays. This is looking absolutely dope, dude. Pick by Danny's dot alter ego. And the cow is by Tigerstone Effects. Shouted them out many times. I love your red robin, dude. Just like I said. I mean, oh God, how long ago was that? I believe that was also that episode where I featured John Vash and Danny, you were in that one, also featured previous cosplay of the week and two-time guest Amit Cosplay, a friend of ours, both of ours, me and Danny's, uh, who we just got done working with uh this last this last week. Um I think that was that episode, I believe, where Amit was on in person and and, I, and we were all making jokes about John's name and V. Ash and all this. It was it was a great episode, man. If, if anybody hasn't seen that episode, go tune into it. I'll probably put a little thumbnail up on the screen. Your red Robin is dope, dude. I love I love the cowl and everything with the red eyes. It is so beautifully done, dude, with the staff and everything over the shoulder, the emblem in the chest, man. I mean, again, another one that's like plated up, you know, it's like that that battle armor style, like definitely out there really fighting the crime. I love it, dude. And these photos that are featuring John Vash, by the way, uh, there's some more pictures on Danny's Instagram and go to John Vash's Instagram as well. And it's totally edited in perfectly where they're like behind a big building and it says Wayne Enterprise on the building in the background i mean they did a phenomenal job the whole shoot is just perfect dude yeah if if i could add i want to say um, yeah yeah I, I i've seen their stuff it looks awesome the costumes are incredible every time i see um saddle ups costume for, yeah. for example i'm always like man like god if only we could get a, a batman costume like this in the movies yes um but yes. also i also i want to say um plug for them i'm pretty sure they both did a a fan film series on youtube yeah um, yeah yeah i did i did a, yeah i did an episode with um with sod and with jason honeycutt the director and, and and writer and cinematographer and producer and editor he did it all of uh batman immortal batman immortal mm-hmm. was the film that sod was in and and him one of his batman uh, suits is in it it's it's phenomenal man it's a short film uh, i believe it's like maybe six seven eight minutes long i mean they went they went over the top with it, man. If you haven't seen it, they got, they got a Batmobile in there. They've, they've got the Wayne mansion in there. I mean, it is phenomenally done and it's, um, it's, it's from the perspective of Alfred actually. 
it's, it's from the perspective of Alfred. It's totally great. And uh, the way that it ends sets up uh, the future for it um, beautifully. So if anybody hasn't seen that as well, alongside Batman is staying there, definitely go check out Batman Immortal. Um, Danny, this is so awesome, dude. You're Robin, you're Red Robin. He's got an amazing Spider-Man up there, a few different iterations, but his, um, his Insomniac Spider-Man is absolutely phenomenal. I just did some work with him that features his Insomniac Spider-Man. I don't know when I posted something. Some people may have seen it. I don't know when all the official photos and everything else is going to come out. We're waiting on Leo on that. And then I can reveal more of the video work that I did as well. Um, but this is this is absolutely this is great, man. After the cosplay of the week, I'll throw up a little a little clip of something that that I worked on for Danny. Uh, Danny, this is beautiful, man. Don't stop, keep doing everything that you're doing. I can't wait to work with you in the future, man. Because Danny Darko, your Red Robin and Tim Drake Robin of the cosplay of the week for me and Jason Ortega is amazing. <laughs> and quickly enjoy this little video I did for uh, for Danny as uh, Insomniac Spider Man. This is exactly why we broke up. I thought we broke up so you could focus on your career. We broke up because you wouldn't stop treating me like a baby. I may not have super spider powers, but I'm not made out of glass. You know what? Can we not do this right now, please? Did you learn anything about Dr. Michaels? And now a word from our sponsors. She's unbelievable. Hey, Charya, we gotta talk about something. Wait a minute, dude. How do I know it's actually you? What? Do the thing. I gotta make sure it's you. Again. What? Do the thing! Quick! Oh, it really is you. Okay, no one can do that like you do. What's up? Anyway, did you know in the Absolutely Awesome Llama skit, you spelled absolutely wrong in every iteration of the graphic? First of all, I don't know anything about a skit. Dude, the camera's wrong. Oh, it's fine, dude. We're breaking the fourth wall today. We're breaking the fourth wall? We're breaking the fourth wall. Breaking the fourth wall. It's spelled wrong, bro. What happened? Hmm. Well, is it spelled right in the actual merch? Yeah, it's spelled right on the actual merch, but... Okay, then we're halfway there, right? All right, up top. No, dude. Hand down. You just gonna leave me hanging? No, dude. It looks stupid. Like we can't spell. Well, like you can't spell. Me? I have immaculate spelling. I once won a spelling bee. You want a spelling bee? I could have. Hey, look, listen, if you could just stop selling llamas for maybe a couple days, we could probably- It was one time, maybe twice. It was seven, seven times. Why are we yelling? I could yell too. You said you weren't mad about this anymore. It doesn't make any sense. Who sells llamas? We don't even have a big enough bet. Look, listen, since you can't spell, I got you one of the new, absolutely awesome crew necks. Available on the Side Project merch store now. Wear it, glance at it, remember how to spell absolutely. Every time you walk by a mirror, look in the mirror and go, oh, that's how you spell absolutely. But then it'll be backwards. Fine, then don't look at it in a mirror, dude, but wear it and remember the spelling so this doesn't happen a second time. Here. Oh, well, thanks, man. Hey, I like the side project logo there. Right there on the sleeve. Yeah, you got it. It's just been so hot though lately, man. Can't I wear something that's a little less long sleeved? Not you, but we all are. How did you change so fast? Like the new Run It Up tank tops, available on the Side Project merch store now. It's just like one minute it was a T, and then the next it was just, it all happened so fast. Oh my God, dude, it's about to happen. Oh, dude. Hold on, where's this coming from, dude? Run it up. Oh. Run it up. Jesus, dude. Up. Dude, where is this coming from? It feels so good. Run it up. Run it up. Run it up. Run it up. It just plays when you put one of these on, dude. Run it up. All right, Jason, before we get out of here, man, I'm doing this new thing that I, I kind of just started. Actually, I don't know why I'm saying I kind of did. I literally just did last episode. <laughs> I did with CJ Prop <laughs> Studio was my guest. Uh, I, I mean, I've done some things like it before, like with Sod and Jason Honeycutt and the Batman Immortal episode. I did kind of a little thing like it, but now I'm kind of really pushing it forward more. And I'm, it's kind of like a rapid fire questions thing, but we don't have to go literally like super rapid fire. Like, what's this? And then you answer, all right, next one, what's this? Like, we don't have to do that. We can talk about it, but it's a little bit less in in depth, I guess you could say, than what we've talked about in the in, in uh, the early uh, early parts of this episode. So I kind of like to call it <laughs> shotgun questions. Uh, if you could have any superhero powers, any powers at all, what's a top pick for you? What powers or abilities would you choose? 
I would say probably shape shifting or mm. um, teleportation. Nice, dude. Yes. Oh, those are classics, man. I, I'm, I'm an indecisive motherfucker. Like, so <laughs> I ask these <laughs> questions knowing that if they were to be uh, asked back to me, I, I would have a difficult time figuring out and narrowing down one answer, dude. Um, in another universe, there's a you out there that's best friends with a superhero. Who's that superhero that you're friends with? Iron Man, duh. No, I'm just kidding. It's Batman. Come on. It's, it's Batman. I had a feeling yeah. it was Batman, dude. Hell yeah. You guys, are, he's just, he's just calling you up while you're hanging out like, oh God, Jason, today was a, today was a rough day, Jason. You know, <laughs> you know, I had to, I had to fight the executioner. It was getting crazy out there. <laughs> let's go get some bad burgers, bro. Let's, exactly. Let's go get some bad burgers and forget about it. <laughs> you're, you're, you're one of the very few that knows his actual identity. All right. So I got another Batman question for you then. Batman, out of these picks, Keaton. Bale, Affleck, Pattinson. You can only have one. And not only can you only have one, but the one you choose is the only one that continues to exist. So none of the others exist. Keaton, Bale, Affleck, Pattinson. You choose one and the others cease to exist. Who do you choose? As a character, um, movies aside, writing aside, actor aside, I would choose Pattinson's Batman. Um, as wow. the one to stay, yeah. Now, I, when I, I I asked CJ Prop Studio that question as well, and he chose um, Bale. And when I posted that clip on Instagram, believe it or not, um, a Bale Bale got a lot of picks. Affleck got a couple picks. I think Keaton only got like maybe one. People that were commenting there what they would choose, and Pattinson actually was kind of going hand in hand with Bale, and I didn't expect that. So it's <laughs> crazy that you actually say Pattinson as well. Um, and lastly, got a fun one for you, man. If you could time travel to any periods, any eras, where would you go and why? And you can choose up to three different places. I think I asked my best friend this shit every fucking week. I think, <laughs> I think okay, well, one that I would put is, dude, I think I, I would want to go to medieval times just for the like shits and giggles, bro. That's, that's because, one for me like, too, yeah. Dude, I, I can just imagine like, like it's, it was a very crude time, but right. it's so funny in retrospect. Um, yeah. Like the, the ridiculous stuff they did. Another I <laughs> one, I, I would want to check out the caveman times as well, just because like, interesting. I, I can just imagine like, let's say I could bring things right. Like imagine yeah. if I go to the caveman times and I just hand some caveman, like, like, a. Uh, I don't know, like some like some monster energy drink. What's gonna happen to him? You know what I mean? like, yes, dude. <laughs> um, and then uh, if I could choose a third one, then I guess it would be the dawn of creation. I'd like to see what that was like. Crazy, dude. Mm. Hell yeah, man. Uh, mine, mine. Uh, this, this, this part of 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 this segment, I always, I always talk with the guest about it. Well, I, I keep saying I always do, like I've done it a million times, and I only done it once. <laughs> um, but once again, like I'm indecisive. I'm trying to remember exactly what I said last time with CJ, uh, but I'm probably going to change it every time I talk to someone or maybe one or two that, that are the same. But I agree with you, man. Like medi medieval times, seeing that kind of stuff would be crazy to see. Uh, kind of kind of like coinciding with the caveman era. One that I always uh, would choose is like, I would love to. And see, here's where the sidebar, here's where talking about time travel could be like its own entire episode. I could talk about that forever. It's like, are we time traveling and interacting or are we time traveling and just observing? You know what I mean? Like mm. you said, such as interacting, giving the monster drink to the caveman. But it's like when you start interacting and you're going back, that causes butterfly effects. effects. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So, and then it's like, for me, for one is one that I would love to see how things were is I'd love to go see how like any, any period during dinosaurs would be mm. insane to see. But do I want to be interacting? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> do I want to be interacting or do I just want to be like some weird out-of-body experience where I'm observing, you know? I don't know. And then um, I always love to see like not going even, I, I got a lot that would be like super far back and stuff too, just like the ones that you picked. But I've always uh, also, I would, I would love to even, I'd say more so recent in a sense of not as far back as the ones that we just said, but even like seeing like the 1930s, like interests the shit out of me. Mm -hmm. Like I, I love, I'm a big fan of like, um, my family's from New York, from Brooklyn and everything. So I'm a big fan of like seeing, uh, the 1930s, like New York, like mafia style, like all that stuff. You know what I mean? And like, even like Chicago, like John Dillinger and things like that. I'm a big fan of like the mob and mafia movies and stuff. So I just would like, I would crazy to see those times and just like, 
I don't want to say like normalized, but almost just like all the hits that are just happening on the street. And it's just like, <laughs> it's just like happening every other week. You know what I even, mean? Like even crazy. The creation of the creation of Batman, man. 1930s. No, right. Yeah. Hey, I wonder yeah. if that I subconsciously picked that for a reason. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, man, uh, before we get out of here, dude, um, the Indiegogo, the Indiegogo. So I know, uh, by the time this episode comes out, the Indiegogo will have ended, but if mm-hmm. you guys don't meet your, uh, your crowdfunding goal, uh, you did say say that you were most likely going to uh, continue the, the Indiegogo or, or repost it. I don't know exactly how, how it works. Um, do you think that that's going to, that's going to happen? Are you guys going to keep running with the Indiegogo or, or what's the deal with that? There's a, there's a chance that we'll just make a new one and um, obviously lower the price because we do have some amount of money now. So we don't need the full amount that we originally right. asked for. Right. Um, but you know, if, if even if it doesn't meet that certain uh, number that we need, um, we'll just work with what we have. Uh, we'll make it work. I'm I'm very committed to getting it done. So for sure, yeah, definitely, man. Um, so while we are going to get ready to get out of here, dude, uh, I do want to give the floor to you to say whatever it is that you want to say. Shout out whoever you want to shout out. Plug whatever you want to plug. Uh, thanks to anybody that's been supporting you. Whatever it is that you want to say, take a few moments and and the floor is yours, man. Yeah, I mean, I guess I would say, uh, I mean. Thanks for having me here. Obviously, this was really fun. Um, I'd love to do it again someday. Definitely. Um, Thanks to uh, the Legion of Geeks. Um, Obviously, like everybody there, uh, whether you are hanging out there to support me or hanging out there to uh, wait for every post to come out and be like, this is garbage. Um, (laughs) (laughs) I mean, you're you're still helping me out, man. You're helping my page grow little by little. So um, thanks. There are tons of incredible people on there as well. I, I, I swear, like, if you could tell me pretty much anybody in the following's name, I could probably recall them. I, That's cool. I, I, I remember everyone, man. Like, you're all amazing. Um, but also thanks to uh, the cast. Um, we're not done yet. We're only one episode in. But um, I know that they'll see it through. And it's been great so far. Everybody's amazing. Luke, um, Mason, uh, Henry, um, everybody that's coming forward with Aiden. Um, and everybody in the future episodes are all amazing. Isabella, uh, Kevin, um, is our editor. He is, uh, the man who really does the magic on this. Um, he oversaw so much. He made it so much like simpler. Um, so, uh, yeah, I hope, you know, he continues to make great things. Um, once this is all said and done later this year. Um, and yeah, so if you want to find me, um, my Instagram is at the Legion of Geeks. Uh, there's also one for Batman staying there. Very simple at Batman staying there. Um, Batman staying there is available on Spotify, Anchor, and Apple Podcasts. Um, if the Indiegogo is up, I please ask you to consider donating if you'd like to hear more. It helps us a, a big ton. Um, and yeah, I mean, uh, I hope that if you give it a listen, that you enjoy it. Um, and be constructive. I mean, if you enjoyed it, let me know, let the cast know that means a lot to them. Um, they definitely want to hear that, uh, they've done good. Um, and if you didn't like it, uh, also let us know there is a rating (laughs) option on Spotify, Mm -hmm. um, that you can take advantage of. Uh, I always believe in, um, keeping it honest, um, and just, you know, because it makes me better as an artist and, uh, never let people waste their time because time is finite. We don't have infinite time on this earth, so don't let them waste their time on something that you think that they would not like. So, um, yeah, that's about it. Agree. Agree, man. Ladies and gentlemen, like he said, please go follow Jason at the Legion of Geeks on Instagram, as well as make sure you're following his other Instagram, Batman Stained Air. Go listen to Batman the Stained Air episode one if you have not, and make sure to stay up to date with everything that will become its six episode run by following everything that we've mentioned here. Don't miss out because it is absolutely awesome. Thank you for coming, dude. I really appreciate this. It's been an awesome time. I mean, everything that I've said throughout this episode, the stained air is phenomenal, dude. So everybody tuning in, thank you for watching, for liking, for commenting, for sharing, for doing all those beautiful things that you do over on youtube.com slash side project podcast. When you go down, you hit that big red subscribe button and it goes, ooh, and you get 100 sexy project points. What are we doing with those project points? I don't know, man.
I don't know, dude. It's been like 100, it's 126 episodes. I still don't know what we're doing with those project points. We're still, we're trying to figure it out. We're, we're working it out. We're getting together next week and we're going to, we're going to try to, we're going to try to nail it down and figure out exactly what we're doing. Thank you for watching and following and rating on Spotify. If you are watching on Spotify, because videos are available on Spotify as well, or if you're just listening on Spotify, thank you for that as well. And Apple and Google and all those things that you listen on. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. If you're looking for me, you can find me at I G hates Chazzy on Instagram. That is my personal and everything else you need to find me on is on this screen right here. It's not clickable, but all the links are in the description as well as everything for Jason. Everything's in the description as well. No matter where it is that you're tuning in, it's all in the description. You can click it right there. You can fondle it. You can put it in your hand. You can grab it. You can hold it. You can put it in your pocket. Ah, and if you're looking for the podcast as a whole, you can find it at side project podcast on Instagram. And that's project with a K. Don't forget it. Don't forget it. Hey, hey, look, look at me. Hey, don't forget it. Me and Jason are out of here till next time.